When police recover DNA from a crime scene, they look for a match in CODIS, the data bank of DNA collected from convicted offenders and arrestees. 40% of the time, they get a hit. Uh, but 60% of the time, we don't get a hit, as in the person is not in the law enforcement database. And when the investigative leads have run out, those cases go cold. Ray Wickenheiser is the New York State Police Crime Lab System Director. He's also an expert in investigative genetic genealogy, which is not about finding an exact match to crime scene DNA, but a close or familial match. So those are people we know did not commit the crime, but may be distantly re related to the person that did. A brother or father, a distant cousin, it gets police close enough to go back to their everyday investigative methods and zero in. Essentially, it gives them a lead. That's how the Golden State Killer Joseph D'Angelo was caught. More recently and closer to home, a similar process helped solve the 1984 murder of 14-year-old Wendy Jerome of Rochester. It's over. It's finally over. <laughs> Jerome was raped and her throat slit, but the killer's DNA never got a match in CODIS. In 2017, New York changed the rules to allow familial searches, and they finally got something, which led police to 56-year-old Timothy Williams, a Rochester native who was living in Florida. He's now been charged with Jerome's rape and murder. Wickenheiser says these kinds of searches can deliver swift justice after years of futility. The Golden State Killer case, a perfect example. And in four decades, that crime could not be solved. Once investigative genealogy was applied to the case, from the start of the case to when he was arrested was 63 days. It took the Rochester case more than two years from the time of the first familial search application to get results. The Department of Criminal Justice Services says that was because the DNA sample first submitted did not meet the proper criteria. At the press conference where Rochester police announced Williams' arrest, they said the state should be doing more. How this state does not devote more resources and more time and more personnel to focus in on the DNA technology that is out there is mind boggling to me. DCJS points out familial searches are reserved for the most serious crimes, murders, and sexual assaults where traditional investigative methods have been exhausted and they proceed cautiously to protect privacy. But don't expect every cold case to suddenly heat up. There are limits to what New York State permits. While they were able to catch Williams, they would not have caught D'Angelo. And some local cold cases have been completely locked out of accessing familial search opportunities. Why and what's being done to change that coming up at five and six. Call them John or Jane Doe. Unidentified remains like those found in Del Mar and Defreda have stumped law enforcement for years. Despite exhausting all traditional investigative methods, they still don't have a name for the woman whose remains were found in a bag in Defreda in 2015, or the man whose body was found in Del Mar 40 years ago. So in this case screams 21st century technology. Bethlehem Commander Adam Hornick says they've got the man's DNA, but there's a problem. The law doesn't allow us to use that familiar DNA for the purpose of identifying a John Doe. The world of forensic DNA has been exploding. It used to be you needed to find an exact match, but now you can look for a familial match, a relative of the DNA donor. Who is out there who might be related so we can use those individuals to start to build a family tree. State Police Crime Lab System Director Ray Wickenheiser says it dramatically increases your chances of making a successful identification. It's how Rochester police caught the man they say killed a 14-year-old girl in 1984. They never found an exact match to the man's DNA in CODIS, but a partial match to a relative pointed them in his direction. So why can't Hornick use the same technology to identify his John Doe? We're not looking to identify um, a suspect in this case. We're looking to identify our victim. As noted on the Department of Criminal Justice Services website, a familial search cannot be done with unidentified human remains, eliminating a chance to identify victims and provide closure to their families. Back in January, 10 months ago, I started reaching out to DCJS about this, and we've been back and forth multiple times since, asking how things can be this way and when things will change. And I recently found out they're going to. Spokesperson Janine Kava told me that a newly revised policy will allow for the submission of a DNA sample in connection with unidentified human remains. Just not yet. They need time for public comment and possible revisions. There is no timeline yet on this process, Kava told me. So it's coming, but still may not be enough to solve Hornick's case because of yet another limitation. 
I'll explain that and introduce you to a private lab in Virginia that could finally remove the remaining barriers to solving more of our cold cases. In New York State, DNA, whether it's from a suspect or an unidentified victim, gets run through CODIS, the database of DNA collected from people who've been arrested or convicted in the past. But what if that DNA donor comes from a family that's never been in trouble with the law? Take the Golden State Killer case. Dozens of murders, rapes, and burglaries over a span of 13 years. Investigators had the attacker's DNA, but there was never a match in CODIS. So how did they track down Joseph D'Angelo and charge him with those crimes? the same way you might find long-lost family members while exploring your ancestry. And use genealogy databases that are available to the public and look for relatives. Ray Wickenheiser is the state crime lab's expert in forensic genealogy. Someone like D'Angelo, a former police officer, was not in CODIS. Neither was anyone related to him. So they submitted crime scene DNA to GEDmatch, a public DNA database similar to Ancestry.com. The company gives us exactly the same rights as any other person who's looking for a lost relative. The only difference is it's not a lost relative, it's the DNA from somebody at a crime scene. They got a hit on a relative, built a family tree, and were able to zero in on D'Angelo. The technique is blowing up cold cases around the country. New York's crime lab isn't equipped to handle the process, but one of the nationwide leaders in DNA forensics, Parabon Nano Labs of Virginia, has been navigating New York's endless red tape seeking approval to work here and finally got it. Well, every other state, the, from the moment we started offering this technology, we could work there and start solving their cold cases. So we, we've had solves in, in many, many, many states at this point. And New York, well, New York will be next. Dr. Ellen Graytag says Parabon offers what they call snapshot DNA analysis. One part of the process is known as phenotyping. That helps to create shockingly accurate renderings of what someone looks like just from DNA. The other major component is genetic genealogy, looking for those partial matches or shared DNA traits in public genealogy databases. And what our genetic genealogists do is they say, okay, we know our unknown person, this is our unknown perpetrator or an unidentified body, has to be a third cousin with John Smith and has to be a third cousin once removed of Mary Jones and builds those people's family trees just using public records and tries to figure out who that unknown person could have been. The whole process takes just a few months. Parabon has already helped solve over 130 cold cases, but there is a cost, up to $6,000 per case. It doesn't seem like much, but can be more than some police departments have, and New York State won't cover any of it. A tough pill to swallow, but one Wickenheiser says is cost effective in the long run. The 83 cases that have been solved cost society approximately $1.8 billion and the cost to solve the cases using inf uh, investigative genetic genealogy is in the range of $5 million. So the cost benefit was over $300 of benefit uh, for every dollar spent. The best chance for justice in some of New York's coldest cases, as long as you can afford it. There is some help available for departments that are strapped for cash. A new crowdfunding resource called Justice Drive can fund Parabon's work for specific cases. There are also federal grants available, and we posted information to all of that online, WNYT.com. We've also included our entire interview with Dr. Graytack from Parabon. In case you'd like to learn even more about the advances in DNA forensics, finally coming to New York. I'm Jerry Gretzinger, News Channel 13.